Hi everyone, welcome back to another update of Allotment Days. I'm ever so sorry that uh, it's been a while, about four months in fact, since uh, I last put anything up on YouTube. But as I'll explain in a moment or so, there's been a, a good reason for that. Anyway, uh, we'll move on and I'll, I'll speak to you in a minute. Hi. Well, at the end of the last update, I said I'd try and get another episode up within two to three weeks. Well, unfortunately, uh, life took us in a different direction and uh, that's not been possible. Uh, we've had quite a bit of serious family ill health and uh, lots of hospital visits. Uh, we're currently in the middle of a, a course of treatment. My wife is, that is. Um, and we're in the hospital every day and we've another couple of weeks of that. Um, so YouTube videos unfortunately have not been at the top of the list of priorities. I have tried with my cousin's help to stay on top of the allotment and I, th I think we've done quite well. We've got all the beds uh, full and productive and as I'll show you later on um, we're also trying to develop the fourth plot as well. Um, but we have reached a milestone. Um, we're now currently about 80% no dig, um, and it'll probably stay that way. Um, so without further ado, I'll turn around the camera and I'll show you uh, what we've been up to. Okay, catch you in a minute. Hi, we're looking at the first and second plots now, and you can see all the beds are full. If you look over in the distance there, you can see the sunflowers have come out nicely got some dwarf ones and some giant ones and there are a few dahlias as well that have made an appearance, a nice red one there but you can see that the three beds on the first allotment there are two with elephant garlic and they're overdue really for uh, being lifted they've yellowed and they're falling over now so they need to come up and after I've uh, filmed this session I might uh, take them out and see what we've got. I don't think they're as good as they were last year uh, but you never know till you dig them up. If we look down in front of us you can see all the leeks are in and they're growing on nicely although uh, with the weather that we've had, rain for a couple of weeks and then a couple of weeks of sun, uh, you can see we've got a smattering of uh, nice weeds to be picked out by hand. This is the leek and legume bed and under this green cloche here along with uh, a few nettles uh, are the second sowing of peas Kelvard and Wonder. I'll move you a little bit closer and then you can see what else we've got in this bed. To the side of the peas we've got the dwarf beans Stanley this is a variety we grow every year and it's very very heavy cropping and you can see it's just starting to come into flower it's a broad flat bottom drill and probably about 18 inch wide and thousands of seeds popped in and uh, as you can see it's looking really really healthy. We took off the, the cover a couple of weeks ago so that they uh, had room to grow the plants. To the side of the beans we've got two half drills of Monge 2 and the top half there is just about finished there might be another picking on that we've had about eight or nine pickings and in front of it you can see the cloche needs to come off this as well this is the second sowing of Monge 2 and to the right we've got the first sowing of peas and uh, these are in desperate need of a watering uh, they're filling up now they're not far off being ready uh, but a good watering and within four or five days they'll be ready I would say. Just turn you around and we'll look at the bed to the left and you can see that we've got parsnips, shallots and onions and you can see that these these are the the main crop for this year. The shallots have fallen over and they're not far off ready and they're a nice size. These are a, not a banana shallot but they're a little bit more banana shaped than uh, the standard uh, shallots and then just to the side there our favourite 
um, pink onions, the French onions that I showed you last year. We had a really, really great season last year and this one promises to be just as good. None of these have gone to seed, they're all heat, heat treated onions and uh, Caraval Pink is the name, Caraval Pink and uh, I think they cost about £4.50, £5 something like that by mail order but they're a beautiful onion. To the right we've got some self-sown onions, my uh, cousin uh, did these, did them a little bit late, we didn't have any grow lights or anything and I think these might be Bedfordshire champion but they're coming on okay as well and then just to the side we've got some heat treated red barren and up in the corner there you can see this is a neglected spot um, we didn't really have anything in this uh, little bed but we chose to put the Santero and some of the Red Baron but uh, it's about three weeks since I've hand weeded this, this bit and uh, it's got out of control so that's uh, a job to be done turning back parsnips looking good uh, we seem to do really well with, with germination we've thinned these there were a few gaps we've got two uh, no, sorry, three groups of two rows, three different varieties, Student, Albion and Gladiator, as we did last year. And these are the potatoes. We chose to fill an entire bed uh, with main crop potatoes this year. And these are Picasso and King Edward. And if I'd shown you this bed maybe two weeks ago, all the plants were uh, really vibrant, all stood up, but with the rain that we had, I think we had about a week's worth of rain, didn't we? Uh, it flattened some of them, and of course once they start to fall in, all the others start to fall in as well. Um, but these are starting to come into flower. But this is a large bed. Um, it's 24 feet by about 12 feet, so there should be enough main crop to last us through the, the winter. To the right here we've got the brassica bed and we've got about seven or eight rows of Brussels sprouts. The first batch uh, here in front of us, the second variety that we sowed, uh, they didn't germinate very well uh, so we had to re-sow and uh, this is a result of that so they're a little bit behind the ones on the right here. These are uh, two foot six high, these are about 18 inch. But they're all healthy so far. We really suffered with white fly last year, but so far we seem to be okay. To the left, we've got what's left of the overwintering onions. And we've got the shallot germo, I think it is, just here in front of us. They're falling over, so they're just about ready to come up. And We've got the Senshu white overwintering onion and I think we put about 40 or 50 in here and we had four that went to seed and we nipped the uh, seed heads off and let those straight away and we've not had, I don't think, one that's uh, failed and as you can see they're all a, a beautiful size. Uh, there might be one or two that are a little bit smaller, one there that looks like it's rotted in the soil but we've just not been able to eat them fast enough, we've given quite a few away but um, so in this coming week these onions are going to be lifted as are the shallots and we've got some more brassicas hardening off in the cold frame some uh, primo 2 cabbage and some broccoli and that's, that's where they're going to go turn to the right you can see where the potatoes have fallen in on themselves but they're all still growing and healthy and just turn over here, you can see that nice dahlia. We planted about eight dahlias last year and at the end of the season we decided to leave them in the ground because we had lost quite a few in the greenhouse with the mould, even though they were treated with sulphur. But um, of the eight that we left in, four survived and you can see which four they are because they're quite advanced. There's this one here then one just there and then you can see the red one and another lush green one a little bit higher up they're much more mature because obviously the, the tubers are more established but we've added about another eight and um, so they go right up the the middle 
of this uh, no dig bed and uh, they promise to uh, look really nice. All the squash are in in courgette. The baby leaves have died off and uh, they've not really been watered very much but they're growing on okay as you can see here. Two varieties this year are Crown Prince and I think we've then got some butternut squash and I think there are two different varieties but I can't remember the names. And I'll have a little look at the sunflowers. As I say, they're in flower. Right, so that's the first two allotments. I'll give you a quick, brief look at the third and fourth allotments and I'll show you uh, the, well, how can I describe it? The uh, remodeling that we've been doing. Catch you in a minute. Stood at the side of the large greenhouse on the third plot now and everything to the right of the path in the left hand corner is the third plot and we've got a large probably 40 foot by 18 feet uh, flower bed some beautiful sweet william here in front of us the gladioli won't be long before they uh, send up the spikes and we've already got a few um, dahlias in flower some nice ones actually and you can see to the right of the central path the rhubarb's looking okay it's been cut right back and uh, we're leaving it to rest now but i think it might be the polton pride uh, variety so we will be able to pick some more this season although having said that the freezer's already full and then opposite we've got the potatoes sweet corn uh, broad beans The sweet corn are looking great, they're a, a luscious green and we always try with the sweet corn to hold it back and not put it in the ground too early. We always wait until the weather's more settled and then uh, it tends to stay green otherwise it can wax from yellow to green and it really slows down their, their progress. This is the variety called Incredible and uh, the germination rate was incredible this year because often we only get about 40 or 50 percent germination but this time it was about 95%. Got some broccoli and some cabbage at the top there. And down here, another small drill of uh, the dwarf bean Stanley. In the middle bed, you can see the broad beans are just about ready. We've taken some off, uh, but they're still filling out and the, the uh, beans are getting bigger. We lifted some broccoli from this uh, little area here and we've sown some more sweet williams hoping to uh, get those started so that they can then be lifted and then planted for next year's uh, flowers. Potatoes, these are all earlies. I think we've got Kestrel, Charlotte and Pentland Javelin and these have started to fall over as well now. Uh, but they've been in flower and we just took up the first roots uh, yesterday and I think from the three roots they were kestrel they're the purple spotted ones I think we got about five or six pound so a couple of pound a root so we're really pleased and this time we didn't trench the potatoes we just dug a hole with a trowel and dropped them in about eight or nine inch deep and the soil's lovely I, I worried that the soil might be a little bit too hard not not been dug for about two years this bed and uh, but now they've done really well right so uh, I'll just turn you around now and we'll look over towards the new half plot that we took on last year it's taken quite a while to uh, get the upper hand with this because it's uh, been cleared two or three times and uh, the time came when we had to uh, bite the bullet and we've laid paths all the way up the, uh, the plot so I'll show you those now As you can see, we've run a path of 3x2 heavy duty slabs from the main greenhouse to the right of me down to the compost bays and manure bays. And you can see there are some more flags there. 
I've actually been really busy this last two weeks. I think I've done 16 trips with about 600 kilos of slabs on each uh, trip. And uh, by my reckoning, it might be a slight underestimate, but I think I've moved about 10 tonne of uh, slabs. And we managed to buy about 250, 230 linear meters of uh, 3x2s and 2x2s, heavy duty slabs for about 200 pounds. So they worked out about 80 or 90 pence per slab. So we've run a, a path all the way down to the, the compost bays. And then here to the left, it's a bit of a mess. There are some old slabs here, broken slabs and at the bottom. But the plan is to run new paths all the way around this area. At the end of the season, these strawberries are coming up and we're putting three beds, um, just like the, the ones at the bottom there, made with uh, reclaimed scaffold boards. So we'll have two for veg at the bottom and three for strawberries, and they'll all be slabbed all the way around. There's quite a few weeds at the bottom there by the two uh, veg beds. We've got carrots and then we've got swede and turnip. Um, but it, you'll probably have noticed around all the plots there are, there are slabs waiting uh, to be laid. Turn us around now into the area with the fruit trees. This was all really high with weeds because as I say I've just not had the time to stay on top of everything um, but we cleared this area yesterday. The 20 foot by 5 foot bed in the middle is full of potatoes. They're earlys as well. No shortage of potatoes or onions this year and then if I just step back a little bit you can see that from where the, the greenhouse is, we've laid a path that runs up to the long greenhouse. Hope this is not too unsteady. And then we've rounded the corner onto the, uh, as I say, recently acquired new half plot and we've run slabs all the way up to the top and in between the three beds there and right uh, at the top as well. I'll show you that a, a little bit more closely. Three beds here, one with early potatoes. As I said, we've got lots of potatoes this season. Then we've got a bed with beetroot. That's Bolt Hardy and Burpees Golden. Some celery and then some cabbage at the top there. I think they're Savoy cabbage. And we've got 2 by 2 flags in between each bed. And then up at the top here, we've got 3 by 2s sideways. And this is the fruit area. Uh, again, this was full of weeds. It's been cleared once or twice. But started from first principles. We're going to cover this with uh, thick corrugated cardboard and then layer it up with uh, manure. And as you can see, there are lots of gooseberries on and black currants, but they're not as big, the, uh, the berries this year, because all of these plants were transplanted. They were uh, sited with the fruit trees lower down the plot. So, um, but you know, they've still borne enough fruit really. And my cousin plans to make some wine with the, the currants and gooseberries this year. So I'll turn you around and you can see, hopefully, that this new half plot is looking much better. It's much more accessible. We've doubled up the path in the middle there, so we've got really great access. We're gonna put flowers down the border here. And then you can see there are still weeds running along the boundary at the back of the beds. That's all gonna be skimmed, covered with black plastic, and then it'll be capped off with small slabs because the original allotment slabs are coming up and they're going to go here, as I say, capping off the top of there so we can walk around the other side. And then we're going to put heavy duty slabs in the place. And that's on the second plot where I showed you the onions and the main crop potatoes. So uh, it's a real relief, I have to tell you, to have got to this stage. Um, my cousin and I have been hard at it this last couple of weeks. I've had to take uh, some time out from work because I've got to, I've had to accompany my wife to hospital. Um, but in the afternoons we've, we've spent them down here and uh, 
it's been worth it I think we've made some progress still quite a bit more to do and hopefully I'll be able to show you that in the, the coming months because the plan is to get all the paths laid um, by the end, certainly by the end of the, the summer and a um, few beds will be cleared and they'll be replanted um, but uh, it looks like it's going to be a good season I wanted to show you all of the beds now that they're full uh, because you know what it's like come the end of July you start emptying beds and it looks a little bit sorry for itself as we uh, enter into the uh, latter part of summer but um, so far uh, it's been a good year no disappointments as such okay right so uh, we'll maybe have a quick look in one or two of the greenhouses and then we'll call it a day we're still on the fourth plot and we're just looking at the 18 foot by 8 foot greenhouse this is my uh, favourite greenhouse because it's got the grow room at the back which is always really hot and sticky, really humid and it's in here that we've got aubergine, cucumbers and peppers um, and then we've got beefsteak, tomatoes in the larger 10 foot by 8 foot section of the greenhouse uh, this one's more aired, we've got four windows in it and uh, a louvre as well and the door's wide open so uh, this is better really for the tomatoes, lower humidity, better airflow and as you can see there are quite a few tomatoes um, they're a little bit slower I think this year than last year the beef steaks but they are a long season variety well different varieties but they're all long season I'll show you the cucumbers now because we've got quite a few that need to be picked well we've been uh, really lucky this year and as I say we've benefited from the humidity in this uh, this greenhouse and I've not counted them but I think there might be about nine or ten that are ready to take uh, it's a little bit like that when they come you might have one or two and then you think oh we aren't going to have many this year and then before you know it each plant's laden with uh, fruits. I think we've got five that are just about ready there on that, those two. And then if I turn you around, you'll see that we've got one or two that are, are getting there. And then just here, I think we have another two, three actually, that are just about ready. So about nine cucumbers. It's a pity that they didn't uh, come at a slower rate because uh, clearly that's better and you, you often find that you, you end up giving as many away as you eat I need to uh, put some supporting wires on these as well because uh, that's him it's not a bad one is it just hold it back a little bit so uh, these are the uh, burpless variety I've got some of the um, shorter ones I forget what they're called not the femme spot um, I forget in one of the other greenhouses but I'll take two of these this evening and uh, we'll eat those in the coming days just above us we've got three peppers and down below there's one at the back of the chair as well we've got three aubergine uh, I did sow more plants but uh, they didn't make it unfortunately and uh, we suffered a little bit with green fly as well for about a month we were constantly taking them off the, uh, the paprika paprika from the from the peppers yep beef steaks are doing okay as I say managed to stay on top of them they're all tied in and uh, they've been side shooted regularly and been fed with comfrey you can't smell it but I can there's a strong uh, hint of comfrey in this greenhouse which is not very pleasant but the tomatoes seem to like it right uh, we'll maybe go and look at the the cherries up on the the top allotment hi well we're up by the barn and as you can see we've got a nice view of the uh, dahlias and the sunflowers and we've got the blueberries covered up this year and uh, so the birds don't get them and uh, we've got quite a few that are coming and uh, they come slowly so you just have to pick a handful or so at a time a couple of uh, tub 
tomatoes, bush varieties, uh, either side of the uh, bench there. I think one's Red Alert and one's Litsano. They have a slightly better resistance to blight. And they do tend to come a little bit earlier as a rule. Um, but as you can see, the cherries in here with 13 plants and uh, they're coming on okay. We've had a few sun gold tomatoes but the rest are uh, taking the time. And we've got the varieties sun gold, zakura, black cherry and I think sweet 100 and probably three or four of each. So uh, that's the top greenhouse. Well that's it for this update, hope you enjoyed the tour. Sorry if it was a little bit uh, unstructured and a little bit long-winded, but uh, I'm a little bit out of uh, practice and uh, hopefully we'll get back into the swing of it over the coming updates. As you've seen, everything's doing okay, pretty much as last year. All the beds are full and productive. We're already eating well off the allotment, lots of new potatoes, onions, spring onions, Munch to carrots, beetroot, um, things are really coming on stream now and uh, there's plenty more to come. We've also, as I showed you, managed to uh, start remodelling the fourth plot and there's, we're about halfway through doing that. Um, and we'll really see that come into its own next year as we get the borders planted as well and uh, everything's well mulched and, uh, um, you know, finished basically. Um, but it's, it's rewarding uh, seeing that that fourth plot's uh, taking shape. Um, it's taken us a little bit longer with this one. Uh, the first four plots we did pretty quickly, to be fair, and really committed to it. But this, uh, this year has been unusual, as I say. So, uh, as I say, hope you enjoyed the tour. Hope you come back and... Uh, watch some of the harvests that we get uh, during the remainder of the season and I look forward to seeing you then. Okay, take care, all the best.